It is Tuesday night, which means we're going to be cooking. I do have some questions though that I've been emailed that I want to get to. I'm trying to tie my trying to tie my apron and I can't get it. Hang on a second. So tonight we're going to be making um, grilled burritos, stuffed burritos, which are super good. Um, you could skip the grilling part and you could um, instead like you do a wrap with some cabbage leaves or lettuce leaves if you're low carb. I'm going to make myself a taco salad using the same ingredients that we're going to make. You can skip the rice, obviously. You sure could make um, Mexican or Spanish rice with cauliflower also if you're low carb. All right. Hey, Rhonda. Awesome. Okay, so I've had a couple of questions. First question that's come in from the email is, um, well, first of all, yes, I look tired. Yes, I am tired. <laughs> we had a really, really busy day and the snow is starting to melt here. Hey, Jackie, the snow is starting to melt here, which means that that's great, but it's like running off. And unfortunately it's running towards my greenhouse. Um, so my greenhouse has started to flood, which is a bad thing. So like, remember when you were a kid and it was like so much fun to like go out and play in the mud and like divert the water and everything. It turns out like when you're an adult and you have kids, it's actually not that much fun to spend like four hours of your life diverting uh, snow melt away from your greenhouse and trying to dig and pick your way through the frozen earth in the middle of February. Not so much fun. So I am tired. We still have to make dinner. We're going to make it anyway. Okay, so on to the questions. There were some questions. First question is, for those of you who have purchased the cookbook, in the recipes it calls for things like fermented rice and fermented beans and gives you amounts. So I've been asked, is that before we soak it or after we soak it? <clears throat> hey, guys. So... As far as the rice goes, I the amounts in here are, um, like if it calls for two cups of rice, it's two cups of rice that I measured out and then I fermented it and then we used it to the recipe. I don't cook with a lot of rice. So um, if I'm gonna ferment it in a big batch, I would take the amount of rice that the recipe calls for into my cookbook and I would add 25% to that. So if it's supposed to be two cups, I would do you know, two and a half-ish rice um, that's been soaked already. In fact, tonight I have this huge bag of fermented rice that cracked. So we're going to get into it and we're going to use some of it and transfer it to another bag that hopefully won't crack into the freezer. Okay, so then on with the beans. So for fermented beans inside my recipe book, to answer the question, this is um, the amount, if it's, a, if it's a cup measurement, it's the amount after. I usually ferment all of my beans all together and I measure it afterwards. So tonight we're gonna to be making refried beans. The recipe is inside my cookbook. If you haven't grabbed one of these yet, my email's down below, you just shoot me an email. I am working on trying to set up some sort of an Etsy shop or maybe a website. I'm really not skilled at all with either of those things. Um, it seems very, very overwhelming, uh, but I would like to sell my cookbook um, that way so you guys can like instantly purchase it and I just ship it out. You guys don't have to email me and that's kind of awkward. Um, but also, I want to start selling my meal plans. If that's something you would be interested in, comment down below and let me know. Um, I make up a meal plan every month for my family anyway. And so in the meal plan, it would be all of the recipes you need, a shopping list, everything included inside that um, uh, monthly meal plan. And I was planning on making like a two-week meal plan and a whole month for people who go every two weeks to shop. So if you're interested in that, comment down below and let me know. I just kind of need to know where you guys are at. But um, anyway, if you're interested in the cookbook, my email is down below. They're $28 plus $4 shipping. So if you email me, I can send them. They're back in stock. I can send it out to you right away. So this recipe for refried beans is on page 139 that we're going to be making today. It calls for two pounds of pinto beans, which I know is around four cups. So I'm aiming for about five cups of pinto beans. But we're going to get started with the Mexican rice first, which is not inside my cookbook. So I'm going to turn the camera. We're going to do that in just a second. The next question I got was, Trying to get to all the questions. Next question I got an email was um, with soaked flour recipes, which there are some inside my cookbook. So if you're trying to master soaking flour to properly prepare 
uh, breads and stuff from your existing recipes. I always recommend you start with my cookbook and the reason why is because those recipes in there will give you an idea of how much water to add to your flour. Um, it's not a sopping wet um, soaking process. It just has to be wet enough to get all of the apple cider vinegar and water incorporated through your flour. It doesn't have to be even a dough yet, um, depending on the recipe. So if you're having um, trouble baking things and it's coming out doughy when you're trying to soak your own homemade recipes, just remember that you actually need less water than what you think, and it really depends on the type of flour that you're using. Um, the second thing is, I had somebody say that it got too dense. So if, you're, if your soaked recipes are getting too dense, it's because you're not adding enough water. It's too, too much flour. So you just kind of have to, depending on which flour you're using, because all flours in the store are different. They're all different types of wheat. So I wish there was like a cross the board answer I could give for you, but it's gonna take some trial and error and make sure you write down your amounts and make sure you stick with the same type of flour when you're experimenting with this because trust me, when you go to switch flours and you're using the same recipe, it's extremely frustrating to have the recipes not turn out anymore and it's because you switched flour. Each type of wheat requires different um, water ratios. Um, white wheat, hard white wheat, soft white wheat, you know, <laughs> hard red wheat, Hard white wheat, those all ask for different um, liquid requirements when you're baking with them. So that's the answer to that. I feel like there was a third question. If I remember, we'll get to it. All right, let's get to cooking, shall we? Oh, I was going to mention this too. So this is a brand of chips that I buy when we do nachos for my family. Um, these are properly prepared um, chips. So um, the way to tell is that in some ingredients, it will say either traces of lime or lime down in the ingredients list and the reason why that's important is because they've actually taken the corn flour they've added lime to it and let it soak which is called nixamalization or something i can't even pronounce it you guys can look it up nixa something <laughs> anyway and in that process the phytic acid is actually broken down um, into the chips so if you're going to do something that requires chips chips and salsa etc this is a great brand to buy okay all right now on to cooking because that's what everyone's here for right Let's do that. Hope you guys are doing okay tonight. Like I said, I'm just tired from playing out inside the, <laughs> inside the snow. <laughs> hey, Sharon. Sharon's here. Yay. All right, guys. So the very, very first thing that we're going to get started is actually the Mexican rice. Because it's going to take the longest to make. So I'm going to slide you this way. So like I said, I do have a cracked bag here. So it's going to probably be a mess to do this, but we're going to do it anyway. So what I've done is I've melted eight tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna make them quite a bit of rice. You might wanna have this if there's only two people. Um, but I have a big family and we're gonna eat this tomorrow for lunch as well. So eight tablespoons of butter and I've melted it. And now I'm gonna to attempt to get this rice out without getting it everywhere. I think I better go get a bowl for that. All right, let's see what we can do. wasn't too bad. Okay. We need about four cups of fermented rice. That is after you soak it. So it's about three-ish cups that then you would soak and ferment. But this one's already soaked and fermented, so it's four cups. Okay, so I have melted butter here. I'm gonna turn the burner on over medium heat. And I'm gonna start measuring out this rice. I'm trying to get four cups without covering my whole kitchen in brown rice. <laughs> One. Oh, I know what I was gonna say about brown rice too, is that a lot of people don't eat brown rice because they're afraid of the arsenic. Um, but if when you go to soak your rice or ferment your rice, if you, um, when you go to add it to the jar, if you do a five to one ratio of water to rice, so five, the five would be the water and the one would be the rice, um, that ratio actually helps to have enough liquid in there to draw out and reduce some of the arsenic when you're soaking and fermenting. So just keep that in mind. Five to one, okay? 
reason why I choose brown rice is because white rice is a processed food. So brown rice has the whole and all of the minerals still intact. White rice has had that removed. So it's sort of like um, white salt. White salt has had all of the minerals um, removed. And so your body has a tougher time um, dealing with that. Just like with salt, this is the, this is the um, real salt. It's a pink salt or pink Himalayan salt as color. The color are the minerals. And your body needs the minerals in order to handle the salt. When people eat a ton of white salt or really high in things in sodium, you end up having um, you end up having a issue because your body can't handle it well. Same thing with brown rice. That's why I choose brown rice for my family. I want to make sure they're getting all the minerals they need in order to process that rice. Okay. I put a thumbs up for the herbal class. This is Jackie. I put a thumb, thumbs up for the herbal class, but don't know if that was enough to let you know I would like to see you do a class on that. Yeah. So I'm going to do a class on that. The herbal class is next um, Friday, right? The uh, 17th? 17th uh, is our herbal class. So if you are watching this and you are interested in learning how to make your own tinctures, where to buy things, what books to buy, um, what things should be in your basic herbal cabinet, um, you're going to want to catch that free class. There's already a pre-scheduled event over there, um, over here on the channel. And all you have to do is click the notify me button and it'll send you an alert to remind you of the class so you don't miss it. So we're just going to toast this. That's why we put the butter in first. Okay. So while we're waiting, that should be a fun class though. That was also a request by email. If you have a subject you'd like for me to cover or give a class on, um, please shoot me an email. My email's down below for the cookbooks anyway. And I would love that. Sharon, I am making your farmhouse stew as you speak. Ooh, that's a good one. That's one of our favorites too. We love the cheeseburger soup. That's our ultimate favorite soup out of my cookbook. But man, that farmhouse um, beef stew is a good one. Okay. So we're just going to keep on sauteing this. Over here in my Instant Pot, I do have fermented um, pinto beans. You sure could use navy beans. If you're on gaps, you can do the same recipe, just use navy beans. They turn out just fine. Um, using white beans versus the pinto beans. Yes, your, um, your refried beans are going to be white, but the flavor is the same. They taste amazing. There's no reason why you should be on gaps and not be able to taste some sort of a form of refried beans. Rhonda says, I am also looking forward to the herbal class. Oh, yay. That's awesome. Okay, so this is going to keep on sauteing for about three to four minutes. I'm just going to keep on stirring it, and we're going to get started on these refried beans because those two things take the longest. So I put my five cups of already fermented beans into my Instant Pot, and I'm going to get out my um, cookbook here. And we'll see what page it's on. Hang on. It's in the back of the soups. It's on page 139 of my cookbook. So if you have that, that's where your refried bean recipe is. This Instant Pot makes it totally easy. But you could totally add the same ingredients and put it in a slow cooker and slow cook it overnight and have refried beans the next day. It's just that the Instant Pot allows us to have the refried beans tonight, which is what this mama needs. <laughs> All right. And the refried beans freeze amazing. I made some as I was coming off a of bed rest, so um, they freeze amazing. No problem with the freezing on that. Okay, so refried beans is two pounds of pinto beans, which I know once you soak them is approximately five cups of already soaked pinto beans or your bean of your choice. Then we need one onion. This is all going into the refried beans. This is a huge onion. It was a huge onion. We used part of it for nachos. So I'm going to use the other half for this recipe. So one yellow onion. I always use yellow onions, but I mean, if you like the flavor of white onion, go ahead. I just like how the yellow onion is slightly sweeter. <laughs> My husband hates all onions, so he doesn't really care what color they are. <laughs> He doesn't like any of them. But with refried beans, we're gonna we're basically gonna um, cook them, and then we're going to puree them anyway into the nice 
smooth consistency that you can get when you eat out or you go um, to the grocery store and buy it so they can. Okay, so one chopped onion. We need two and a half teaspoons of salt. So you're gonna want your healthy salt. We just talked about this, so colored salt. All those minerals in there so your body doesn't have a problem with the salt. So we need two and a half teaspoons of salt. Okay. All right, one teaspoon of garlic powder. Refried beans are one way that I fill up my family when we're having Mexican because the kids just eat and eat and eat. So it's nice to have something that kind of fills them up. Sort of like bread with soup. Okay, one teaspoon of ground cumin. Um, it says one teaspoon of black pepper. Sometimes I put that in, sometimes I don't. I'm gonna skip it tonight. We had lunch that had quite a bit of pepper in it and so I'm not gonna push it with my kids. They're not big pepper fans. So we're gonna skip pepper and I need to go grab a salsa pepper out of my freezer. I'll be right back. So that's a little tip for those of you guys who grow hot peppers. I freeze all of mine. I used to can them and what a pain that is. Um, and so I just started freezing them. And so then you can touch them because they're frozen. The oils don't come off on your hands. And um, for this recipe, since we're gonna blend it all on up, I'm just gonna chop the stem off and throw the rest of this salsa pepper right on in. You can use jalapeno too if you like spice. Salsa pepper is just like one step down from the jalapeno. So that's what we're gonna put in there. Now, the next step is to cover the beans, just cover them in broth and or water. So I'm gonna add this broth. You could use straight water if you don't have broth. Just adding some broth makes it more nutrient dense. So I'm just filling water up for my filter over there. And this, the um, rice back here is just starting to turn brown. So we're just about there. We just want most of it to be a toasty brown color. Okay, let's see if I can show you guys the beans. Okay, I'm stopping right there. Hopefully you guys can see that. The onions are sitting above, there's a couple of beans sitting above. That's the right amount of water. If you add too much water when you go to blend this, it will end up too, too runny, although if you let it cool off, it thickens anyway. Um, but in order to eat it right away, you gotta make sure you watch your water level. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to put the Instant Pot lid on, and we are going to do manual button, and we're going to select 35, and then I'm going to turn the screen of the Instant Pot away from you guys, because I know it flashes when you record, and I find it really distracting on people's videos, so 35 minutes, I'm going to close the vent, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this Instant Pot away so you guys don't have to stare at that blinking at you. Okay, all right. On with the rice. Here we go. On with our Mexican rice. Okay, scoot you down. On to the next fun thing. Okay, so we have our toasted rice in here. And I'm almost out of butter because it's getting dry in the bottom and we are toasted. So we are going to go ahead and add four cups of water. As soon as I get it out of my water filter. I have Radiant Life water filters, just in case anyone's wondering. Um, you can buy your, your Radiant Life water filter at radiantlifecatalog.com. I am not an affiliate or anything. I just like to spread the word of how important it is that we filter our water. And those are really great filters. Okay, and then the other ingredient that we're going to add, whoopsie, is tomato paste. We're going to end up turning this into a sauce. So I'm going to open that grab my water. Okay, four cups of water. And then we're going to add our tomato paste. I always like take a deep sigh or a deep breath when I am like sauteing something. I add a whole bunch of liquid and like all of a sudden it's like happy. <laughs> And I'm not as stressed, like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna burn something. 
it's just a nice feeling like, oh, nothing's going to stick to my pan now. I've got broth in there. All right. So one six ounce can, six ounce can of tomato paste. You guys can probably hear the dog outside whining. He wants to eat a cat, and the cat's just far enough away where he can't eat it. So he's got to whine and tell everyone that he wants to eat the cat even though he can't reach it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the farm cats will always be his enemy, but that's okay. So we're just gonna go ahead and stir. I'm just wanting to break up the um, clumps of the tomato paste. So this mixture is how you, how they get the rice in the Mexican restaurants to turn that red color. They also typically use white rice. But you shouldn't get a nice color on brown rice as well. Okay, I got for the most part... Oh, is that clump? Hang on. I got most of my clumps out. You most likely won't be able to get all of them out unless you stand here and stir and stir and stir and stir and stir. And stir. There we are. Okay. So now we're going to add seasonings to this. I'm going to use garlic granules. Which you could use powder. <laughs> He's so frustrated out there. And then um, this, is, this would make just a perfect rice here. But I'm going to go ahead and add one can of diced green chilies, the organic green chilies. It just adds flavor and just a tad bit of spice. But you could omit the spice if you don't want it to be spicy. It would still taste really good regardless. And then we're going to add a teaspoon and a half of healthy salt. stir it and what we're going to do is we're going to wait for this to come up to a boil and then we're going to reduce the heat down and put the lid on and let it cook for 45 minutes. It's a pretty easy thing to make. Hi hey, Bethany. Hi. How are you? living room so they can watch a movie okay so we're gonna get this back pan ready for meat I've also been asked about oh, cast iron good. Hmm? Good. smells good oh good I've been asked about getting cast iron not to stick so my my tip my best tip that it took me years to learn was that you never put something in a cast iron skill that's not already preheated I might use the whole thing because I'm cleaning off the you're gonna use toilet paper do you want paper towel um, no, I can't even put the towel. What are you I'm cleaning gonna... with toilet paper? I'm cleaning the, the thing where, um, where you look through the fire so you can see the, where if it's going. But there's no fire, right? No! Oh, okay, you can go use toilet paper. That's fine. There's not a toilet paper shortage currently. I'm not. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and preheat this skillet. And remember, the second tip on cast iron is only over medium heat. We never go above medium heat with cast iron. Okay, this is starting to simmer. We're going to bring it up to a boil. So I got medium heat here. This is going to go ahead and preheat, and we're going to start some meat in the back. Um, I went ahead and bought store tortillas today. I was going to make sourdough uh, tortillas for this recipe, and I totally ran out of time. Um, so anyway, we bought some from the store. We went to town today. And so we're going to be using those for tortillas. But if you would like to make your own tortillas, you could. Um, there's two videos, maybe even three on the channel. One of them's um, sourdough tortillas. The second one is um, keto tortillas, and the third one should be sprouted tortillas. Here, up here on the channel, all those videos are up here. Okay, I'm gonna go get my meat. I'm gonna do two pounds of beef. Like I said, if it's only a couple of people eating this, you're going to want 
and do like one pound of each in the back there. How's it going, sugar tips? You sure you are you sure you don't want I could get you some. We have some, I think it's on top of them. You don't want it. Okay. Well, I'm just at, I'm just double checking with the um paper towel. You don't want to use paper towel? No. Okay. Mom, what the never over medium heat for any recipe whatsoever and always make sure you preheat your skillet before you put anything in this is boiling so I'm gonna go ahead and put a lid on it I'm gonna turn mine down to medium low heat so not quite a low heat but like on my dial it's like a three on my stove and that's just gonna we're gonna just make sure we stir it we're not gonna forget about it but that's gonna be going and then we're gonna start on our taco meat back here So I know I mentioned this in other videos, but we, I, I ferment my rice and my beans and then I put them in these Ziploc bags. This one, unfortunately, I think I overfilled it, honestly, and it snapped. So this will have to be somewhat thawed out and then transferred into another freezer bag. But it's just really, really nice if you're going to be proper preparing your grains that you do them all in advance. And, um, I'm thinking that that will also be part of my meal plans that I plan on selling would be a list of like things you need to do to prep. So soak and ferment so many pounds of rice, so many cups of rice and beans, etc. Um, so anyway, it'll all be laid out for you. But um, I always do all of mine at once and sometimes I even do a little extra and you can have some inside the freezer just in case you last second decide you want Mexican rice or last second you want refried beans or a um, chili. You have those beans and rice already fermented. Let's see, there's something about soaking and fermenting I was going to say. Um, okay, so beans and rice, soaking and fermenting. So we soak to remove phytic acid, which is the first 12 to 24 hour soak with an acidic medium. Then after that, we rinse them and we ferment them. And the reason why we ferment them, and fermentation is not needed. If that overwhelms you, just soak your rice and beans. That's awesome. Soaked rice and beans will fill up your family so much faster than regular rice and beans. Especially these days with food being so high priced and we need to be able to stretch our food properly preparing your grains will fill up your family so much faster they'll eat less so that's another perk to doing this but when you take it from soaking and to going into fermenting the reason why you'd want to do that is not for the beneficial bacteria because we're going to cook that off but fermenting your grains and your um, rice and your beans um, ends up breaking down the hard to digest starches which make people fart with beans and gives you bloating with rice so if you ferment, that's the reason why we want to do that, is it's just easier on the gut. So soaking is to remove your phytic acid in your enzyme inhibitors, and continuing the process along into a fermentation is to help break down hard-to-digest starches um, and make it so it's more pleasant for everyone else in the house and make it so your pants will fit after you get done eating rice. So that's why we soak and ferment rice, and especially an emphasis on the fermentation. If, you, if it's too overwhelming and you're just starting with this, just soak it with the acidic medium for 12, 24 hours if you can, and you're good to go. All right, we're rolling. All right, so we're waiting for the meat to start cooking back there. I can hear it starting to sizzle. So to that meat, we're going to go ahead and add one chopped onion this is a really gigantic onion because i have two uh, pounds of beef back there if you're going to do less beef then do less onion maybe it's a medium sized onion hey honey 
You want to come meet everybody? You're filthy. When I take my shoes off. Okay, I'm he's going to take his shoes off and he's going to come meet all of my friends that are here watching me cook. Everyone will find, he's really filthy though. He did insulation today at work, so he's covered in insulation. But don't worry, honey, they're not judging tonight because I don't look very good either. I'm really tired because I was out like battling the, uh, I was crawling around the, the flood, you know, outside. Uh -huh. I was crawling around in the attic putting a beam up. Oh, he was crawling, crawling around the attic putting a beam in. I was fighting the flood and I really didn't want to build an ark, you know what I mean? So I just <laughs> decided it would be easier to go out there with that. That big tool you have, honey, what's it called? That big old busting tool that looks like a huge oh, nail. Crowbar? Yeah, I didn't know, no, the big one. The breaker bar? Yeah, that huge one. Uh -huh. So I was out there, right, I didn't work out today. That was my workout. That was your workout. Yeah. But anyway, we got the drainage thing. Uh, somewhat worked out for right now anyway. Um, and so I don't think we have to build the arc quite yet. Okay. <laughs> All right, here's my dirty husband. <laughs> oh, you're not, you're too tall. Oh, there he is, <laughs> Mr. Abundantly Blessed Homestead. What are you working on tonight? We are making grilled stuffed burritos. Uh-huh. Are you going to Bible study? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All righty then. All right, well, enjoy your shower. Are you showering? What are you doing? I'm doing a quick clothes swap. Okay, well... You enjoy that, and we'll see you later. Yeah, you will. <laughs> Some people ask, like, who's your husband? We've never seen him. Well, there he is. <laughs> He's a Jackie says you're a cutie. <laughs> Mountain man and all. Mountain man and all, Jackie. <laughs> Jackie says, can you put together a complete list of all corrections to your cookbook so I can give that info to the person I give you your cookbook to? Yes. What I will do is the two. Cor there's two corrections. Um, and one big correction is the, well, there's three if you're going to count that, was that the sourdough tortillas never made it in. For some reason, it was copied over on the page on accident by the printing people, and it carried over the recipe from the sprouted tortillas. So that recipe is not even into the cookbook, unfortunately. It's up here on the channel, but not in the cookbook. And then the other two fixes are sourdough ones, and I can put that, um, I'll put it on the community section page, and I'll put pictures of the corrections. So that anyone who bought the original cookbook before I caught it and got it fixed, um, you'll have your full recipes. But the other recipes are um, sourdough English muffins and what was the other one? Uh, Grain-free apple fritter muffins. Those are both missing a few ingredients. I tried to add pictures to my cookbook. This is how it happened. And so I had to reorganize the um, ingredients to the cookbook, to, the, to those specific uh, recipes and then what ended up happening was I didn't have enough pictures and it was making it more expensive to add pictures and so I decided I wasn't going to do pictures so I removed the pictures from the cookbook and it like reformatted the page but it like deleted that other column and I didn't catch it until I printed 150 of them and they were delivered and I was like oh my gosh I deleted half of it so it's fixed now and all the new ones but yeah I will make a like a little community post um, with pictures of what it's supposed to say. No problem. All right, so we're just sauteing this over here. We gotta make sure we saute it good for Jeremiah. He's the one that doesn't like the onions. I'm just gonna give it a stir. We're just gonna let it keep on cooking back over there. Yeah, it was like, uh, I'm pretty sure it was a grain-free apple fritter one. Uh, my cookbook's getting so dirty. I'm using it too much. <laughs> Let's see. Grain-free apple fritter muffins. That's the one that was missing a whole side of ingredients. How you doing, Navea? Good. So I bought some more um, uh, bulk herb store teas, and we're really liking this one. Um, bulk herb store is an amazing place to get loose leaf tea because it's organic, which is awesome, and they have relatively good pricing, especially for the amount you get. So this is ginger snap tea. If you add a little bit of cream to the tea, it tastes like a cookie, a ginger snap cookie. 
Um, so that one was really, really good. And then the other one we ordered, which I think everybody should have on hand in the winter, is called Urban CT. So this is bulkherbstore.com. And um, this is just a source of a lot of vitamin C. So they've got um, rose hips in here, orange peel, all sorts of things to boost your immune system. And you can drink this every day and not have it be negative um, to your, your body. So um, this is really good too with some honey. What else did you guys add? Or you just don't like this one? Oh, I didn't. The Urban C one? Urban Juicy? Yeah. I think I had a little honey to it. Honey, okay. So it's just honey is what she's saying for this one. So that's a really great company though. They ship really fast and they're fair prices for organic tea. All right. How you doing? Are you getting hungry? Is that what's happening? No. No. Okay. <laughs> you just bored? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's kind of exciting over here. <laughs> My pan's just like super full over here. I'm just trying to stir it without putting it all over my stove. If you're frying up meat and there's like no liquid or no fat in the bottom for it to cook in, you can always add butter. Grass-fed meat is always a little bit leaner than regular store-bought meat. So if it ends up kind of being dry, you can always put a little bit of butter. I think I'm going to put just a little bit in here. Because the, the cast iron pan is hot. It's just not cooking very quickly. So let me get some butter. Your big sisters are going to inspect, and if it's all nice and cleaned up, you guys can watch the movie. Okay, so I'm taking, I don't know, four tablespoons of butter. I feel like there was another question from somebody and I feel like I'm forgetting it already. Somebody had another question. Let's see. We're, we can shred some cheese while we wait. So we're going to need some cheese in order to stuff these burritos. I'm going to be shredding um, the organic cheese I buy from Azure Standard. Ooh, it's kind of wrinkled, but it's the Romano Organic Mild Cheddar. That's one of our favorites. It's not, it's not, it's not raw. So I had that question also this week from somebody. Well, if I'm going to bake it, I don't need to pay for raw. No, you don't. Just try to get organic. Um, if you can't afford organic, just cook from scratch. Okay. Cooking from scratch is way better than buying processed food. In fact, I have been so shocked. Um, every time I go to the store, which is not very often, but we were in there today to grab the tortillas. I just could not. I just can't wrap my mind around how much processed food has gone up and how much the boxes have gotten smaller. Like organic food from scratch, those costs have gone up as well. But you're still buying celery that's the same size. You're still buying onions that are the same size. They haven't shrunk. Um, you're still buying five pounds of potatoes. Like your whole foods have gone up in price, but they haven't shrunk as well. And the processed foods. I couldn't believe it. I was raised on hamburger helper, you guys. Um, I wasn't always a cook. Um, and I had a widower teach me how to cook after his wife passed away from cancer. And so, um, I was just shocked at how small the hamburger helper is. It what, feeds three people maybe? I mean, it's just so tiny now. It says it serves five, but five of what? Like a one-year-old or something? It's so small. And then the cost was, just, I just couldn't believe it, even on sale. Um, you could, if you like the taste of Hamburger Helper, you sure could um, walk a little further down the aisle, grab some um, noodles and your beef you were going to pay for anyway, and some taco seasoning and some cheese and make, make the cheesy taco uh, pasta that, that they like to advertise down that aisle. Um, and you would be paying less money by doing it that way than buying it out of a box. And it's the same amount of work. You're adding seasoning, 
you're adding your noodles and the same amount of water and, and in some cases milk and you're cooking it all. Totally doable. But I just couldn't believe how much prices have gone up um, in the store, for, especially for processed food. It's just getting crazy out there. And there's so many people who are dependent on processed food. And if you are one of them, I used to be dependent on processed food as well. You can totally do this. Does it take a little bit more time? Absolutely. Instead of it taking 15 minutes for me to make dinner, it takes me about an hour, sometimes less, depending on the meal. Um, and with this meal, you could totally have the tortillas done before you go to eat, and you could have the refried beans going while you're at work, if you end up working outside the home. And same thing with the rice. The rice could be cooked inside the Instant Pot. So um, there are ways to do it. There are ways around it. You could make the refried beans ahead of time on the weekend when you're home and freeze them. So it's just about, if you want to, if you want to get serious about your food budget and you want to save money, properly prepare your grains and cook from scratch. If you can't afford organic, that's okay, but just try to cook from scratch. When you cook from scratch, you eliminate a ton of toxins that are going into your children and yourself. And because we don't know exactly how many toxins are safe before you end up with things like cancer, etc., um, we try to eliminate those as much as possible, especially in our children. Everybody loves their children. Everybody wants what's best for their kids. All right, I'm just going to dump this into this bowl. Because people are going to kind of, I'm going to grill these, so we'll have to put the cheese in for the people. And then grill them. They end up like super yummy. It's almost like a, when I used to eat at Taco Bell. It's almost one of those. <laughs> I mean, I guys, when I'm, I'm serious when I say I was raised on Hamburger Helper and frozen pizzas and Taco Bell and McDonald's. Um, I was raised on all those things. I did not cook nutrient densely until about the last 10 years of my momhood so um you can do it too anybody can do it it just has to be important enough and you just gotta take that first step of choosing to cook from scratch all right this is about done back here i always feel like you guys can't see the stuff on the stove because it seems dark to me but it's always the right Always the right lighting for you guys. I don't understand that, but it's just the way it works. It's okay. Whoops, I got wild meat. The cow wasn't quite ready to go in the pot yet. All right. I'm going to get a pot holder because that's hot. And I'm going to open that up and we're going to give it another stir. I don't want it to burn down to the bottom. Once all the liquid is absorbed, you're good to go. And we are close enough. I'm going to show you guys that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it from the heat. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a lot of steam coming off. But it's nice and thick, and there's hardly any excess tomato sauce in there right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn off the heat. Put the lid back on to keep the moisture in so it doesn't dry out. That's one thing about Mexican or Spanish rice is it does dry out really fast. Because you basically have rice that's covered in sauce. So, All right. So this back pan now is going to get um, my homemade taco seasoning. This recipe is up in the channel and it's inside the cookbook. And we are going to get a tablespoon. Here's one right here. And we're going to put five tablespoons in this because there's two, two pounds of beef. If you've only had one, you would do three tablespoons. And if you're ever making a recipe that calls for one of those taco seasoning packets, you want three tablespoons of homemade taco seasoning. So I'm going to go with five because we've got... Like I said, two pounds of beef back there. Okay. All right. And then we're going to do some moving around. I'm going to get another skillet out, and we can start grilling these babies. So the refried beans are going to be aside. Those have 29 more minutes on their cooking. So I'm probably just going to verbally tell you guys the protocol with those. Um, the whole recipe is inside my cookbook step by step, just in case you don't want to come back and watch the video. I'm going to actually try and start time stamping these because I know people watch them 
and they might only want to see a certain part, like how to make um, Mexican rice or something, and not want to watch the whole hour-long thing. And I totally get that. All right, so that's done. So, let's see how we can move some things around here. I'm going to put the meat right underneath you guys. Here it comes. And I'm going to go ahead and scoot this back. And I'm going to go get my last skillet. This is my big one. I think it's a 14 inch. It's a big cast iron skillet. So once again, we're going to preheat the skillet. Now I do go a little bit over medium with this pan just because it's larger than my burner. If you have gas, you'd still want to keep it at medium, but I have electric and I have a flat cooktop and my little cooktop surface that heats up is not as big as this pan. So we're going to go a little bit higher than medium, but not by much. And we're going to be using lard. Okay. My favorite cooking medium. Now, why don't we use olive oil? Let's talk about that. Uh oh, here comes a crying kid. Hang on. Yep, here he comes. It's William. He's the odd. Oh, come here, buddy. What happened? Here, why don't you come here? You can help me tell the people why I don't use olive oil for cooking. Come on up. What happened to you? Buddy. You poked me. Buddy. Somebody poked you? Why did you poke me? That's so sad. Would you like some milk? Yeah. Okay, that would make it better. You know, you could make Jackie's night if you just say hi, Jackie. Oh, don't pick your nose and say it. Okay, don't pick your nose. Okay, now say it. Say hi, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> He's picking his nose. <laughs> All right, stay right here. Don't touch this. It's hot. I'm going to get you some milk. And then we'll clink glasses and everything. Okay? Hey, hey, we're not. Watch a movie. Oh, it's not clean over there? Hey. Is there drama happening? Yeah. I'm sorry. You you were born into a house full of girls. I apologize. I don't I don't want anybody poking me. I know, poking isn't that nice. Yep. Yeah. It poked me all the way into my into my kid and bleed. Oh no, where's the blood? In my body. In your body. <laughs> All right, we'll have some milk together, and I'm sure it'll make it all better. And then, hang on, wait. Remember? Why did I click yeah, it? Yeah, we click it, remember? Why? Just because that's what you and I do on the show together. We click our glasses, and then we drink. Remember? Why well, Why you have to do that? Because it's cute. Why do why we have why? to do that? Well, why do you think we have to do it? Because the cow would be mad. The cow would be mad if we didn't clink it? Yeah. Okay, well, why don't you drink your milk? <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, so we're going to tell the people why we don't cook with olive oil. You ready? Yeah. Okay, so olive oil is um, a great oil to use for cold purposes like salad dressings, etc. But when you heat olive oil, it doesn't remain stable. So... Um, if you can imagine like a bunch of different molecules bumping together and what ends up happening is it causes um, it to be a free radical within your body. So we don't want to do, the more free radicals you have, the more damage you're having through your body. So we don't want to use it for cooking. There are other much more stable um, oils to use and I love lard. Did you drink all your milk? But you could also use coconut oil or butter. For your sauteing and baking, um, I love lard. You could use tallow. You could use goose fat, duck fat, any other sort of semi-solid at room temperature except for Crisco. Crisco is vegetable oil and a long list of other not-so-nice things that you, if you actually researched into it, you would never put it in your body. So we're going to do lard. Oh, it's hurting? Oh, you need more. You need more. More milk, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's it. But, but it's 
I will kiss it. Okay, I'm gonna wipe your face off. I'm not hurting. Not hurting? Oh, you just need a kiss? That's so nice. Okay, so on to filling our tortillas. We're gonna grill one together. So I'm gonna just get a spoon. It's a little easier. The refried beans will be served on the side. I mean, you could wait till the refried beans are done and then stuff those in here as well. That's good. Are you not gonna watch a movie? Um, well, is it clean over there? Uh, that's too. Okay, cheddar it's cheese. Kind of clean. Okay. Well, kind of doesn't really work. Does kind of mean you like cleaned it, but you stuffed everything underneath your bed, or what does kind of clean mean? I was reminiscing, you guys. Oh, I don't know if I should say this. My mom doesn't usually watch my channel. Anyway, my chore as a teenager was to keep the kitchen uh, floor clean, like mop it. And so one time I had just been fed up with it, and so I uh, used the sprayer inside our kitchen to spray the, to spray the entire kitchen floor down. Um, and I just like spread Dawn dish soap all over it, and then like walked around with towels to clean it up. And let me tell you that one inch of water over a kitchen, average side kitchen, actually. I'm not going to get any more milk in there, no. So one inch of water over your whole kitchen is actually a lot of water. And I didn't really think that through. And so I ended up using all of the bath towels in the entire house to clean up my mess. Um, and then, of course, my mom saw all the extra towels in the laundry. So anyway, she wasn't too happy. But um, that did happen. I chose that. So a little bit of the ground beef, a little bit of the Mexican rice, and some cheese. Can you you could do salsa in here. You could do all sorts of stuff. Can you put it in the sink? Sure. I'll put it into the sink for you. And then you need to get down because this is it's kind of crackling and I don't want you to get burned. Okay. Down you go. Thanks for your help. You're cute saying hello to Jackie even though you did it while you are picking your boogers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Camera, why need the comments? Because I missed a whole bunch, guys. Hang on. All right. I spilled molasses on mine. I missed whatever that... You spilled molasses on something. Um, Jackie says, hi, William. Oh, here you left. I'll tell him later. Rhonda. Hello, no bad cow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like you, my child... Jackie says, like you, my childhood food was not the greatest. My mom didn't drive, so she only shopped when dad drove. And we ate all canned veggies that would keep. And mom always had a big can of Crisco. Yeah. My mom did too. Okay, golden brown and toasty. You see that? Do you want one before you leave here? Uh, well, it's done. I can give it to you right now. It's like fast food. It's like In-N-Out Burger. Okay, you don't want to eat while you're driving? No, not okay. The truck that I have. Okay. I'll eat when I come back. Okay, I will save one for you. Thank you. I won't be eating yours because I'm going to have taco salad. That's fine. <laughs> See you later. I love you. So you don't have to do them quite as crispy as this, but we like ours crunchy. So it actually turns hard when you saute it in the lard. I could have totally put coconut oil or something else in here um, that is a semi-solid at room temperature because that's what we use for baking and heating up. Um, things like avocado oil and extra virgin olive oil are great for you. They are so nutritious, but just don't heat them up. And we're just going to start like layering these on a plate. And then we can talk about what we do next with the refried beans because I still have another 20 to 30 minutes on cooking those. So on the refried beans, let's go over that really quick while we wait for that second one to sizzle. So what's going to happen is this timer is going to, whoopsie, this timer is going to go off in 19 minutes and I'm going to let it sit. I think I let it sit for 10 minutes. Let me check my recipe. Sometimes I let it sit, sometimes I let it instantly um, vent. So hang on one second, I'm going I'm to follow what my cookbook says. Doesn't really matter either way, guys. All right, it says, um, 
You can instantly release it, is what my cookbook says. So either you instantly release it or you don't. Don't spread it if you can't instantly release it. So as soon as this beeps, um, I would get this um, whole vent thing on the top up here that you release with. Um, I would get it away from my wall and I would release it into the into the room and release all the pressure. I would open it and then I would use um, a submersible blender or a stick blender, that's what they're called, um, to go ahead and blend the whole thing. You can also dump all the contents of your Instant Pot or if you're going to use a crock pot into a like a some sort of food processor to make it into a smooth uh, refried beans. And like I said, those freeze well. Don't be afraid to make the entire recipe and then just put the excess when it's cooled in a plastic bag inside your freezer. They freeze really good. All right, so this is dinner minus the refried beans because we still got some more time. And that's it for tonight, you guys. If you guys like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget, we've got the live class next Friday. I'm still planning on doing a cooking class on Tuesday. I just don't know what I'm going to make yet. <laughs> so you have to stay tuned for that. I'm also still working on the apple fritter roll. I cannot believe I lost the footage twice. I'm beyond frustrated with the um, editing software that I use. I keep losing footage and it's driving me nuts because when you're cooking something, you only get the footage once. I mean, it's not like you can go back and re-roll up your rolls that you've already rolled and already baked. So um, I'm just getting really, really frustrated with it. So I'm just gonna wait till the weekend again I'm going to research into some other editing software. Um, I'm also feeling out the idea of maybe doing a Patreon and doing more classes over there that are more focused. So the way Patreon would work is that I don't want to make any money here on YouTube, but if I'm going to start giving classes, it'd be nice to have just a little bit of money from some people who wanted to participate. So um, I'm, I don't even know how much, a couple of bucks, guys, but just to have access to extra videos that were classes and courses on everything from sourdough, etc. So I'm tossing that around a little bit. Um, I hate it when a YouTube channel all of a sudden goes from giving free content to charging for everything, and I don't ever plan on doing that. Um, but I am trying to find ways that I could make a little bit of money doing this um, and also provide great things for you like meal plans and shopping lists and um, my cookbook, etc. So I'm just tossing those ideas around. I don't know if I'm ever going to look into Patreon, but that's a whole other ball game of uploading videos and different editing software. So I'm just trying to figure it all out and it's a lot to absorb and I'm not a tech person at all. <laughs> I would love to have my own website, um, but I don't know what I'm doing at all. So if there's someone out there who does that for a living and you watch my channel, hey, my email's down below, shoot me an email. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'd love to be able to provide that type of a service for people. But um, anyway, so yeah, keep your eyes out. That uh, live class will be next Friday. I'm planning on a live class on Tuesday. Um, I just gotta pick out what I'm gonna, going to make and make a pre-scheduled event for you guys. But next Friday should be a blast. If you know anybody who wants to make their own basic herbal medicinal cabinet, make sure you guys send them a link to that class. It's totally free, I'm not charging for it. I just want the information out there um, and I want to kind of update my older video. Um, it was my very first video here on the channel and I want to be able, a lot of those stores have closed or the books are not available anymore. So I just wanna update with everybody what the new stuff is, what, what I use now and kind of the way I do things now. So that was like four or five years ago with that video. So anyway, that's the class it's gonna be about. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys all there. And I will put up a pre-scheduled event um, for next week's live once I decide what I'm cooking, because I don't even know what I'm cooking yet. <laughs> and um, I'll see you guys next Tuesday for cooking. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, Sharon, I'm not sure, because it's only giving me your one comment, it just says on Patreon, so I didn't get the rest of it, cut it off. Apparently, um, let me see if I can get the rest of it back. I, I hate YouTube. <laughs> I hate YouTube as far as the chat goes. Oh, there we go. Hang on. I finally gave it to me. Okay, hang on, guys. I'm missing a ton of stuff. Hang on a second. All right. One thing I noticed is my kids are, this is Rhonda. One thing I have noticed is my kids are getting used to harder beans that are not out of a can, just going to cook longer. Yes, on classes on Patreon. Oh, cool, Sharon. Thank you for that input. I don't want to put a whole bunch of time. I don't have a lot of time, guys. I've got five kids in a farm. And so if there's interest in the Patreon thing and you're watching this replay, will you please comment down below? I'm not looking to make a million and one dollars, but if I'm going to put extra time into things and do specific classes, 
I need to know that people are interested because it's like a whole nother step of me getting a business and all of those things. And right now I haven't started any of that. So if there's enough interest, I will go down that route. And if not, that's okay too. We can continue here on YouTube. Um, but anyway, just let me know down in the comments. And thank you for joining me. Thanks, Sharon, for being on. And Jackie, who else is on? Kathy's probably on. She can't comment, though. <laughs> hey, hey, Alabama. Five Kids in a Farm sounds like a good name for a channel or a book or something. <laughs> well, I don't know that I'm ever going to write a book. I've actually had people request that I write a book because when we first moved out here, we actually lived like 1800 style off grid with our family of seven. Um, we don't live that way anymore. We obviously have power and electricity, um, but we did live that way for seven months in the Midwest through a winter. Um, and so I've had people request that I write a book about that because it was definitely quite the experience. It was something I always wanted to do with my life just to see what it was like to live that way and to know I could live that way if I had to. Um, but anyway, I don't know if I'll write, write a book book ever, um, but maybe another cookbook. I'm not sure. We'll just have to see. But it is a good title for something. <laughs> Five kids in a farm. Maybe someone will take that and make a YouTube channel out of it. I don't know. But um, anyway, <laughs> all right, you guys. Have a great night. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for joining me and hanging out and going through all the hard cooking and all this stuff with me. I know it took a little bit more time than normal. Usually I'm off by now. But I'm so glad you guys are here. And like I said, if you're interested in me starting a Patreon channel with extra classes and stuff on it, let me know in the comments down below. Um, and if you're interested in purchasing pre-made up meal plans with nutrient-dense foods, comment down below and let me know. I just need to feel out you guys as far as what you guys are interested in because I don't want to spend a whole bit of time doing things that people don't want. Um, but the meal plans would have all of your recipes you need, a shopping list, and a prep list as far as what to, how many cups of beans to ferment, etc. So if you're interested in that, comment down below, let me know. And I think that's it. So I will put the update for the cookbook. If you purchased a cookbook originally, not, not the recent ones, but the ones back in November, there are two recipes that are messed up um, from printing. And so I'm going to put over on the community page pictures of what they should say. Um, there, so you guys can just handwrite the few ingredients that got deleted in the right-hand column um, into you guys' cookbook. So that's it, you guys. I'll see you guys next week. Have a good evening.